Hello, welcome back to another K8NDS video. Today we're going to demonstrate the use of uh, a few pieces of equipment uh, to simplify the tuning of a HQ magnetic loop, uh, my helically loaded magnetic loops, as you've probably seen on some of my other videos. Uh, they're very sharp tuning, very high Q, and uh, uh, some people are working on automatic tuners, but I want to show you how just how easy these things are to tune uh, just uh, manually with the switch with a few devices that make uh, life really simple. My station consists of a FTDX5000 Yezu transceiver. And the reason I bring this up, it has a 9 megahertz output. The 9 megahertz output goes into a LP Pan 2 uh, right here. I don't know if you can see this unit or not. It's a very small unit. It's a IF receiver, which uh, strips off the I and Q signals of the uh, IF. And from there, they go into a high-end sound card. I'm using a model EMU0204 by Creative Labs, and it's got a very low noise. Uh, so it's a very important thing to have a low noise sound card. From there, the sound card goes via USB into my computer. Into my computer, I run the program, as you see here, Power SDR IF stage. And what you're viewing there right now is a 17 meter band. So that's a signal you're looking at in the center of the pan adapter. Anyway, back to uh, the operation. One of the key uh, things that I just purchased that I added to this system that makes tuning wonderful is a MFJ matchmaker. It's called a MFJ model 212. Just a little unit. I'll try to hold it up here. See if you can see it, how small it is. And it's connected via a couple of cables and a DC power. And it goes in between your transceiver and your amplifier because you don't want to put a kilowatt through it. But it can handle up to 300 watts. So it goes in between there, and basically it is a broadband noise generator, which generates at least from 160 meters through 2 meters, a broadband noise source uh, via a directional coupler. It sends the noise source out to your antenna uh, system. And, uh, of course, the antenna system will absorb, uh, in layman's terms, absorb the frequency of interest. And therefore, you will see a dip when the antenna is tuned, whether it be a roller inductor antenna tuner or my HQ magnetic loop with the remote control system. As you tune the system, you will see the dip at the resonant frequency, which is a, a very sharp dip uh, with the high Q loops. And you can either use it uh, via the signal strength meter or a uh, better yet, as you'll see in my demonstration, an LP pan adapter, uh, where you can see the dip just uh, transverse across the screen. So uh, from there, we'll just uh, go into uh, some demonstration videos. Uh, thank you again for watching another KANDS video. Okay, what we're viewing here on the, uh, on the screen is the entire 17 meter phone band. It uh, goes down into the digital band a little bit, as you can see from the frequency readout on the top. But what we're going to demonstrate here is I'm using the helically loaded magnetic loop. And I'm going to show how easy it is to tune uh, using a combination of the LP pan adapter it's the LP Pan 2 and the MFJ matchmaker unit called the MFJ Model 212, which is a broadband noise generator that sends a signal out to the antenna uh, via a directional coupler. 
and uh, a very uh, unique way to tune without uh, interfering. You can tune right on the frequency you're listening to without any interference uh, putting a carrier out in the air. So I'm going to pick a station here. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you can see the cross here, somebody that's uh, reasonably strong. Well, the one that's in there is pretty good. We'll click on him and we'll turn the volume up. Yeah, and he's pretty, pretty good signal. Now I'm going to turn it back down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tune the resonance on this guy uh, using the, the uh, let's see. Well, it's already tuned. So what I'll show you is uh, how we can go back and forth. We'll go to a different scale so you can see the dip better. And it's tuned on frequency, but you see how I can move it. Uh, I'm moving it over to the higher frequency in the band, and I'll move it back towards the lower frequency in the band. And you can see the dip move along very conveniently. And there I'm tuned pretty close. Uh, we'll see if we can get it a little bit better here. There we go. We're right on. And that's how simple it is. Just a couple flips of the wrist, and you're tuned, and you turn this back off. And you go back to where you can hear the guy. And yeah, did you know uh, Neil McPherson? And now it's I know, tuned. I know there's a station on the side. I, I, know, I don't know the much. Now it's tuned exactly one to one, which I'll show you a, a video shot of the uh, SWR bridge shortly here. Uh, this is a screen capture program, so I can't show you both at the same time, but we'll uh, show it to you shortly. Thanks. Okay, here's a picture of the VSWR bridge. The power uh, meter is on the right. Uh, the SWR is on the left, as you can see, in case it's not real clear. Uh, this is the tuning uh, that I just accomplished uh, using the pan adapter. I'll throw some power on. There you go, 200 watts on the right, and just about zero, like a one point one to one on the left and that was tuning was done without putting any power into the antenna at all just using the uh, LP pan adapter and the MFJ 212 hello what we're demonstrating here is we're showing a view of the uh, 17 meter band a phone band pretty much you can see that we're peaked up in the center the high Q loop has a hump in the center so you can tell that it's tuned I can show that by turning on the uh, MFJ matchmaker uh, unit there you can see where it's tuned pretty close to the center we'll turn that back off and uh, what, what I'm going to show here is um, how we demonstrate moving from one band to the other uh, I'm going to do this also by turning the noise up and we're going to move from the 17 meter band to the 15 meter band to show how fast you can you can accomplish this so here we'll click on the 15 meter band and as you can see the noise floor went way down because it's not tuned and we'll just uh, go to the high frequency switch here and listen for the noise There you go. That's how fast we retuned to the 15 meter band. And as you can see, if we go again to the uh, the uh, MFJ matchmaking unit, and you can see where we're tuned there over to the left a little bit. And that's how fast I was able to change bands, and I can change frequencies within the band here very easily, as you can see. Transverse back and forth across the screen. And that's a demonstration on how fast you can actually change bands. Let me turn this matchmaker off. It makes quite a bit of noise, and that's another demonstration of changing bands and changing frequency. Okay, let's do a demonstration of tuning the uh, helically loaded magnetic loop. 
by uh, using the MFJ212 and the S meter. All of you do not have a pan adapter or may not plan on getting one, so you can see how you can do it with the S meter. So uh, let's find the station that we can hear and uh, look. Okay, there's a station that we can hear that I want to want to tune to without putting power. So we're going to tune to the station without putting power to the transmitter, just using the MFJ212 and the S meter. You see the S meter is up there about a uh, S7 or so. There you go, it's down to about an S2. That means it's fully tuned, and I'll prove that by shutting this off. And we'll put a little power and then look at the, at the meter. There you go. 200 watts and just about zero reflected just using the S meter.